Karma would be uh, translated well with the phrase cause and effect, I think, or action and consequence. And it's the realization, the knowledge that you or I, by our thoughts, by our words, by our deeds, we generate consequences continually. suffering from some kind of an illness, call it reality, call it samsara, call it the human condition. You go out into this, into this uh, urban world and you're hit with a thousand urban myths. Within seconds you have 10 or 20 very strong images pushed right into your consciousness. And they're not pleasant images. I think this affects us. I think people living in, in cities like London, they definitely need methods and ways to find some kind of peace with themselves and with their you know, with the environment, because they are under a lot of pressure. People living in London have so much stress and they're exposed to so much pressure. There are a group of people called the Buddhist Sangha, which are devout, but they are institutional, they're monastic, and they're celibate. I became a Buddhist in 77, and I became a nun in 1985. So about six, seven years ago, uh, I moved to London and started Samizong London. Then on the other hand, there are the tantric practitioners who are non-institutional, non-monastic and non-celibate. Well, I didn't want to be uh, one of those weird uh, Buddhists isolating myself from the rest of the world. But when I found this religion, um, which you can call religion, but it's, a, it's quite uh, broad. I think it's the only religion without, without God anyway, with another God. We often get on opposite sides. And there's a little war going on. As a nun, you don't drink. I do every normal thing everybody does, which is, you know, listening to music. You don't have sex. Playing video games on computer. You don't go dancing. Go on shopping. You don't wear makeup. Um, have sex. You shave your head. Um, well, get drunk. Why not? Um, um, anything really. Whatever I like. I don't have any restriction. I, I would like to have material things, and so would you, and this is, this is sanctioned and blessed because you would have then, it makes sense just to think you would have more to give to others with. I don't um, separate my life from material things. I actually use them, uh, try to give value to material things. There's a certain sort of instant gratification involved in having plenty of everything, but it's not actual true Happiness. The thing I think is we don't want to get into the, the sense of hankering about the car. If only I had that money, that job, and this is very much a little rat race that Westerners get into. When I go to a Buddhist retreat, I see a hundred examples of exactly what I don't want to be. Little people with strings wrapped around and, and they got a few words and catchphrases and a few mantras and it's just not what I want to be. I think a lot of times they become too structured and they lose their vitality. They lose, you know, their life force. You spend all day in meditation. So you have a very strict schedule throughout the day where you start at 4 o'clock in the morning, you meditate and until breakfast time, you eat breakfast and you meditate until lunch time and after lunch you meditate. So throughout your whole, all the four years there's a very sort of strict scheduled program of progressive meditation. In our daily life, a little bit of that meditation is good. It's like a spice. You don't want too much of it. It's a powerful spice. The practice I do, we meditate by chanting, actually, aloud, a mantra.
what we actually do to it, uh, uh, eyes wide open, we are conscious all the time. <laughs> Whatever thoughts we had, you know, uh, we have in our head, we don't try to stop them. Actually, we try to let them go and flow, um, like clouds in the sky, I guess. In the beginning, the mind rebels from this. You literally won't want to sit in meditation at all. You, 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 you'll find your own mind telling you to do anything else. It'll tell you, no, this is ridiculous. You don't want to particularly you know, sit at all, it, you know, my back hurts, I don't want to do it, I have other better things to do. So in, in the first instance, you've got to train yourself. It's definitely possible to integrate meditation into everyday, ordinary life. That's what it's all about, anyway. It doesn't mean that everybody should become monks and nuns and go to monasteries or go to live in caves. Absolutely not. It's very much about integrating whatever you learn into every single, every, every imaginable situation. One time in the recent past 48 hours, I had to use my meditation because I really felt myself drawn into wanting to argue with her because the things she was saying was so untrue. And I couldn't believe that this person who lived above me and come to my door a uh, hundred times, if, if once, for help. Can I have a screwdriver, anything from a screwdriver, a cup of sugar to my this is overflowing or the fire started, you know, every little thing. Then when I asked her for one bit of consideration, it was just not going to happen. And this incredible barrage, which, I mean, I looked at that and it had to be born out of some kind of mixture of jealousy and fantasy. And it was quite a lot to put up with. And I thought, my goodness, how have I influenced this person so badly? And so I had to think in that moment, there's, I really don't want to jump into this. And the only thing I could do was the idea of going back to the peaceful meditation. And be, so when I felt the anger come up in myself in that moment, I thought, you know, I just want something between me and her, so I, I chose to use one of my protectors, which is the goddess Yeshi Womo, quite wrathful, very fierce with fangs, and I just put the image of her between me and this woman who was attacking back. <laughs> Today, society uh, finding themselves confused by um, the situation we are in, becoming more and more technological, but it's not really giving you any answer to uh, what, what we are, really. In times of uh, war and great difficulties, people People, uh, they ask more questions. I think what most people want in this life is happiness, so they don't get that, they're searching for it. And they are brought to face the reality of, say, death and uh, great suffering. We need to know that we are going to die. We don't want to be neurotically involved with that concept and have it to be a monomania, but what we want to do is be aware of it because it makes the time more valuable, and we use our time differently, I think. I think that there's little argument if I told you you'd be dead in two years from a certain disease, you would use your time very differently from, from how you would use it if you never thought about death or dying until you became old. When through taming our own mind, uh, living in the present, that's, that's the first step to finding inner happiness. Do people need spirituality in today's age? They, they do. They, I think they need positive spiritualities. They need positive, wholesome paths. They need to learn that there's a place that they can come for refuge. You know, that there's a sheltered place inside of them which is eternal. I basically, I feel more, I feel happier, I have to say. Uh, even if before I, believe, I thought I was happy, although I had really miserable days sometimes, um, now I feel that I, whatever happens to me, I can really overcome it. I had to have a series of surgeries and unhappily one of them, they were rather complicated orthopedic and neurological surgeries and one of them went really bad and one of them had some complications and because of the, there were infections involved and it just took a long time to get back up on my feet. So I'd say yeah, there were elements of this tantric Buddhist path that really helped me survive that. 
And there were times when I didn't know if I would survive it, you know, but it helped me get through it one day at a time and get myself into today. Now we respect life, that's the only thing that life is our most important, most precious thing. I think there are many people that practice something very similar to Buddhism, but they would never call themselves Buddhists. You know, they, they just are basically good people. So a lot of Buddhism on the practical level is simply common sense. That, that's the only one, really.